Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a privilege to have the opportunity to be here and <clears throat> to the extent that sharing our vacation selfies uh, or <laughs> other pictures of, of Zach and share our journey to the extent that that helps motivate you know anybody through even the most mission-driven organizations occasionally you have bad days and you need that extra little bit of kick to get through it uh, we're happy to help provide it uh, so thank you for everyone at Rocket and everyone else who helped organize this event to create this because it, it truly is us all together and if there's anything that we've learned from this journey it's the power of community and how that helps us get through this and how that helps drive advancement so my name is Adam Becker I'm here with my wife Marissa Give a little wave she hates the center of attention she, she's the real powerhouse in the rock of the family but she doesn't like speaking so I get I get to take one for the team we are the proud parents of two boys Benjamin, who's 10 and in fifth grade, and his younger brother, Zach, who's eight, and was diagnosed, there he is, uh, was diagnosed with Fanconi anemia uh, in August of 2015. So he was about five and a half. Um, so we were invited here to share, and by the way, if I'm looking at my phone, it's not because I'm texting, I have some notes here. Uh, <laughs> to the extent that sharing our journey, I'll talk about what it was like to get diagnosed, what it was like before then, our journey since. Um, we'll go through all of that, but it was interesting as I was thinking about what we wanted to say, it, we don't, as, as a parent or as, you know, speaking on behalf of Zach, we didn't want to be singled out. It's not really about us on our own either. It really is about what we can achieve together. And, and I was talking to somebody this morning who pointed out that the, the theme of Rare Disease Day or the tagline is, Together we are rare and, uh, sorry, alone we are rare and together we are strong. And I didn't know that until today, but it really resonated with me. And so I want to try to weave that theme into various aspects of, of the journey. So bear with me. Um, by the way, I know this is a fairly informed audience here, but how many people are, uh, show of hands, how many people know what Fanconi anemia is? Okay, pretty good, about two thirds of the room. But so for the other one third, Fanconi anemia is a genetic disease, so I'm half at fault. Um, it's a DNA breakage or DNA repair disease. So um, one of the, when cells, our cells are di constantly dying and regenerating and copying themselves uh, all the time. It's happening right now. Fanconi kids, the, the DNA doesn't copy over correctly as consistently as it should. And so that's characterized by typically early onset bone marrow failure, aplastic anemia. And that typically happens, not always, but typically between ages six and eight. And then it also leads to a much higher incidence of cancer. I don't remember the exact percentage. Andre probably does. But um, what percentage of kids are mo very likely to develop solid tumors before age 30? And because cells don't copy over correctly, the traditional treatments for cancer, which are radiation and chemo, which kill healthy cells, almost invariably are fatal. So it's a life-shortening disease. Um, Zach went through his bone marrow transplant about um, just under two years ago. It was May of 2017. And thank God he had a very smooth experience there and he's was back in school within three months. He's in second grade now. Um, you know, I'll get into his outlook later, but really you know, one of the reasons we're excited to be here is we're banking on the progress that you can make and you along with your colleagues and with other research organizations, uh, medical organizations out in the community, we're banking on you guys because it's the gene therapies and the immunotherapies and the non-chemo, non non-radiation treatments that are what, that's what's going to help Zach live a full life. 